I must say it's it's an absolute pleasure to be at this end because I'm probably your number one consumer. Um, I love everything that you put on and we're always trying to join whenever we can. So thank you. And I'll just say, uh, um, if anyone would like to put their cameras on, I don't mind what you're doing because I'm usually the one peeling, doing my laundry, having a few tantruming kids around and tuning in. So it'd be lovely to speak to a bunch of faces rather than just screens. Um, and anything I'm going to share tonight, I just want to give a disclaimer. Um, I'm no greatness guru. It's just things that I've picked up along the way and tried to integrate into my own life. And I'm really excited to share them because there are um, things that have really changed the way that I live. And obviously, it's a lifelong process. We need to go through it and grow through it every day. Um, but some valuable points here that I hope will make a difference to um, all of our lives. So most of what I'm going to share tonight is actually based on a lovely idea I heard from Miriam Cosman in her book, Circle Arrow Spiral. It struck me that so many people I meet and myself, we're always running, rushing on the treadmill of life, running in all directions, um, someone just walked into my house a few minutes ago, the piano teacher, how's it going? Oh, same old, same old. And we're stressed, even though compared to our great grandmothers and grandfathers, our lives on the surface should be so easy. Everything's just a click away. We, you know, go around on wheels and we're so connected in so many ways. But at the same time, we're always rushing, rushing, rushing. And there's this urgency in the air. So about a month ago, I think I hit rock bottom with this because it was my birthday and I found myself sitting in a restaurant with my husband, actually, both with computers, trying to work out a whole load of work stuff. And I realized I had to recalibrate. I just wasn't the work life balance had gone completely askew. And I found that I was just doing, 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 doing. And I wasn't being present in the moment. And sometimes it's for those who of us who have children, our children are the ones that pinpoint where we need to grow and it was through a few things that had happened with my kids that I realized I need to stop I need to recalibrate this isn't working now what Miriam Cosman says is there's actually two forces in the world that are at loggerheads one is what she calls the male force which is the arrow and that's the force telling us that we need to progress and strive for excellence and keep going and going and doing and that's amazing that's what we're here to do, right? Uh, six days a week, we're supposed to be working. Shabbat is the day when we're supposed to stop. But then there's the circle. And if I can actually share the screen here, you'll be able to see it visually. I'm a visual learner myself. So when I first saw this, it just really resonated. Um, share screen. Let's see if I can do this. <laughs> okay. Can you see that? Wow, that's a miracle. So when we're in that mode of getting it done and we're trying to achieve and succeed, we're so result driven, but we forget to smell the roses. And that comes onto our next screen, if I can get it up there, where you have the circle. The circle, she calls it um, represented by the East, you know, the Eastern religions. It's all about being in the moment, being present, being harmonious with the people around you, with the world around you building relationships. The problem with the circle though, is that it ain't going anywhere. It's just completely static, going round in circles. And somehow in life, we need to find that synthesis where our arrow driven actions that take up most of our lives are balanced with that coming back into the circle. And then, you have the spiral, which I thought was really lovely because you've got this spiral that is moving, that is achieving, that is driven by the arrow, but at the same time, it's got the balance, which Kabbalistically, and according to the Medrash, that is what Hashem is. That is Hashem. He's completely excellent in terms of who he is, and at the same time, complete in his excellence and excellent in his wholeness. Now, the question is, how do we achieve that in a day, on our day, in our day to day lives? 
Okay, there's a powerful idea. I, I think Henny Machlis was someone who epitomized this, which is that at any given moment in our lives, there's only one tough kid. There's one thing we have to achieve. But somehow in the middle of that thing, there's a WhatsApp message. And then there's someone having a tantrum or at work. There's so many things coming through our lives that we don't get to focus on the moment. So how do we get there? Now for this, there's a wonderful piece of Torah that I heard from, do you know what? Let's first ask you guys, because I'd love to make this a bit interactive. What would you say, and you can comment on the chat, what are the arrow driven tasks that your life consists of? So give me examples of things that you're doing when you're in arrow mode. Looking forward to seeing everything pop on the screen now. Examples of your day-to-day -day tasks that take your energy. Nama, what do you do every day? Do you want to say something that you do? Okay, so, oh, great, here we go. Making dinner, laundry, cleaning, cooking, shopping. It's constant. You're going to school every day, being rushed off into the car, getting picked up from school, eating working, doing activities. So much of our life is do, 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 do. And then how about the circle activities? When are we actually being? So let's have examples of activities that are circular. Beautiful, davening for others, to him, dinner, helping grandchildren. And it's interesting because a lot of these can actually go in either direction. Any other activities that you would say are circular, they are focused on that wholesome, harmonious connection as opposed to progression and doing and achieving. Tehillim is a great one as well because um, what, what Miriam Cosman says in the book is that prayer is very much the idea of stopping from action in order to come back into the relationship, which is why throughout the day, when we're busy, we're supposed to be um, having all that activity, but then three times a day we have, or especially for a male, has that obligation to come back into the circle and balance that. What I recognize though in my life, oh, beautiful, we've got time with family, playing cards with a family, reading, walking the dog, holidays. So all of these are activities that are building our relationships, building ourselves, they're about being in the moment. Last week, it's actually this week, I had an experience where I had to take my kids swimming and we've had both of our cars broken down. One of them's completely gone. The other one is hopefully going to be repaired. So I found myself on a Tuesday afternoon going in an Uber to the swimming pool with my girls, which is something we've never done before. Now for them and for me, to be honest, it was an adventure. So we were enjoying the moment and we actually stopped off at Apex Corner to pick up one of my other girls who gets a lift there. And instead of driving to the swimming pool in the usual rush, we walked and we actually marched along and I was singing as we went along. It was just such an unusual, it was an unusual um, part of our routine to be doing that. By the time we got to the swimming, they were so excited. We'd gone on this nighttime adventure, walking to the pool. They had a great swim and at that point, Later, I realized I was in circle mode. I was enjoying it. I was enjoying them. I had a lovely chat to someone while I was there. And I was busy connecting while they were having this experience. And when we got to the changing room afterwards, I was just enjoying, continuing to enjoy myself. I'm not always like this, but I was looking at the towels that they had and the fact that they were color coded. This has taken me years to accomplish because Forever, every bathroom was just loaded with towels of all different descriptions. And I never knew where they clean, where they dirty, who do they belong to? They just always ended up in a mound in the middle of the bathroom until I decided that's it, we're getting rid of them. And we went off to Asda to buy every kid their own color towel. So now I can say, all right, Miss Purple, you're still on the floor, go and take care of it. And then hopefully if I keep washing them regularly, we won't have to get mixed up. So I'm enjoying the fact that their towels are colored and I know which one, who they belong to. 
And then I hear some other mums who, who are actually usually me saying to their kids, come on, hurry up. We've got to get going. Why are you taking so long? Hey, pick that up. It's getting dirty. Hurry, hurry. And my kids were also getting ready. They'd been for a wonderful swim and they were doing the very same tasks as the children around them, right? They were arrow tasks. They were progressing. But somehow there wasn't that stress there because I happened to be at that moment feeling wholesome, feeling harmonious, at peace, however you'd like to describe it. I was in circle mode and it was just fascinating to me how different the vibes were in the same room. It was one was barking commands. Come on, let's go. There was an urgency. There was a stress. You weren't good enough. And with my kids, not that I was being a saint, I just happened to be chilled at that moment. And we were getting ready and there were some snacks and things were going perhaps at a slightly slower pace, but we all got out of the pool. That was out of the um, uh, building. And it just struck me that somehow, even though we have a beautiful Torah with so many, basically what Mrs. Miriam Cosman says is the Torah is there to give us that opportunity to find a balance between these two forces. So for every progressive, excellence-driven activity that we might have in this world, we have a balanced action. So we mentioned before the idea of prayer and action. Tefillah is there to provide that balance in our daily schedules. We have the six days of the week, and then we have Shabbos. So we have that balance where even though we're mainly in male mode, we have that circle mode that is there to provide the balance. We have all together, this whole world is one of action. And the next world, the world to come is the circle. But somehow, even though a task can be very circular, so you can be walking your dog, going on holiday, enjoying Shabbat, or supposed to be enjoying it, like experiencing something that is there in your life to provide a harmonious balance, but you're doing it in arrow mode. And at that point, it destroys whatever it's set up to be. But at the same time, it works the other way because here we were doing arrow tasks. We're all busy doing arrow tasks all day long. And yet those activities can also become circular. And I'll give you an example, which my husband just um, brought out for me. It's the story of Hanoich the shoemaker. So in the Talmud, you have Hanach the shoemaker who's busy fixing and stitching shoes. What, did, what does it say? The Torah writes that Hanach walked with Hashem. He walked with God. He was a cobbler. And with every single stitch that he made, he achieved mystical unions with his creator. And then the question's asked, how on earth can that be? If you're busy in the mode of making shoes and that's your business, you need to be focusing on your tasks. There's no way that those mystical pursuits, when the Medrash describes that, that cannot mean that while he was sitting there doing that, his mind was engaged in mysticism in Kabbalah. That would be forbidden. Rather, says Rabbi Yisrael in, in the Talmud, in the Gemara, the mystical unions he achieved were nothing more than the concentration which he lavished on each and every stitch to ensure that it would be good and strong and that the pair of shoes he was making would be a good pair, giving the maximum pleasure and benefit to whoever would wear them. So there you have it. Here's a man who's doing an arrowed task. He's achieving his line of work. He's producing shoes. And yet, at the same time, he is focusing that activity on bringing joy to people, on building shoes that people will enjoy. So that is something that actually we can, I re, I've been realizing is something we can incorporate in our lives, in anything and everything that we do. It can be the most menial task, the most repetitive task, the most stressful task. And yet, if we're able to tap into that circle, to tap into the harmony and the wholeness and the presence of being, that this is my purpose right now, we can achieve that same level of connection, even in the most busy, progressive times. Now, for myself, 
the way that I've seen this as happening is it's mainly just a focus as as I'm going through whatever it is to be aware of where I'm at. So that's really the first stage. And then I find that once I'm aware of where I'm at, I'm able to access that circle energy. So, for example, busy, crazy mornings. Here it's a lot, lot of kids, whoever it, where, in whatever situation you're in, there's a deadline, you're rushing, there's something to do. Being aware of how you're feeling, being aware of what's happening around you can go a long way. So I remember this morning, I think it was this morning, I was cutting out some birthday invitations for my daughter who's having her birthday party. And meanwhile, there was a tantrum going on and I just continued cutting because I knew that was what I was doing right then. At the same time, being aware of all the action flowing around me. But right now I'm in my circle. I'm doing whatever I need to be doing. Yesterday, I shared this with a group of women and one of them said, they used to drive themselves crazy making a fruit salad for their kid every morning. And they found and that was an achievement. That was something that they felt they had to do in their morning. And what happened was instead of actually bringing them any closer to that child or helping the child, they ended up being so stressed about it until someone questioned, do you really need to be cutting up that fruit salad every day for, his, for, the, for the child in nursery? Why don't you just send him with a fruit, send him with an apple? And she realized that she'd been so busy doing and right, you know, deciding that this is what her kid needed. As soon as she took stock and took a step back, oh, actually he'd be fine with an apple and that's good enough. And she was able to connect in the moment. So sometimes we might be doing the very same tasks and it's just having that awareness that allows us to be present and to be even when we're doing and sometimes it might require a bit of a shift. I'm gonna share this screen again because I'd like to bring this back to another part of Torah that my favorite bit from uh, Rabbits and Wriggler, which I think really encapsulates. I've pressed the wrong one, just a second. Okay, let's just try again, one second. Okay, here we go. Mm hmm. Not sure how to get it back on. Actually, let's just try. Okay, one second. Okay. We'll see if this works. There we go. Okay. So have a look at this. These are one of these optical illusions where you see, well, um, perhaps post in the chat what you can see. Right, either you can see a vase, or you can see two profile pictures facing each other, right? Now you cannot actually see both at the same time. So as human beings, we are neurologically wired in that we can flip from one experience to the other very quickly. We can go back and forth milliseconds apart, but we cannot see both at the same time. And I believe that it's the same with the arrow and the circle. We have activities that we're doing that are driven, that are, that are arrow tasks, but whilst we're doing them, think about it, you're always either in arrow mode or in circle mode. And when Reverton Rigler teaches this, she quotes um, from Tehillim where it says, you shall not, Serve the God of estrangement. One second. Okay, I'm just laughing at myself because I didn't manage to print the notes. <laughs> but basically it says, do not worship the El Zar. And the Gomorrah says, the, the El Zar that's within you. And the Gomorrah questions, Who, what is this El Zar? And what Revolver describes is that the El Zar is actually 
not an idol, a physical idol made of wood or stone. It's the force of estrangement within each and every one of us. We all have that arrow and we all have the circle. The circle is the opportunity to connect. Every mitzvah is designed, latsevet, mitzvah is the root of connectivity. Every mitzvah is there to bring us closer, to bring us closer to ourselves, to bring us closer to the people around us, and of course, to bring us close to Hashem. But we have a choice. We can sometimes even take the mitzvot, which are there to connect us and allow them to distance us from other people. If we look at the world of estrangement, as um, Robertson Rigler describes it, recognize any of these feelings, anger, resentment, fear, sadness, being fretful, critical, jealous, worried, we recognize all of these. And for many parts of the day, we might be in those zones, but every mitzvah and every moment provides us with the opportunity to step into the world of connection, where we can feel those circular motions of love, generosity, harmony, where we can be happy, where we can be confident, where we can trust in Hashem, where we can be peaceful. And it's a whole different experience. What's interesting is that we can be in the very same place, the same time, and have an entirely different experience of life. When we were in that swimming pool, we were in the same mode. There wasn't much difference practically between what the activities that anyone was doing, but it was just a mindset. Every moment we have a choice to make. We can decide how to approach something. Now, what I do find is that naturally, most of us will veer more to one than the other. For myself, I must say, up until, for, for most of my life, I've been an arrow. Even the way I approach creativity and art has been in a very arrow mode, looking at the notes, following perhaps the left-brained approach. This, this, this thing, this idea can apply to so many different um, ideas in Torah, but the idea is basically we all have both. We all need to have both. But with the right intention, we can, we can all achieve that symbiotic balance between the two. And we're so gifted to have the Torah that is there to always bring us back, pull us in and remind us of how to keep in the right direction. A couple more examples, practical life examples of where this can pan out. The quintessential example that Miriam Cosman brings of being in a circle, a circular action is the idea of nursing a child. There, there's not necessarily a specific purpose. Okay, there can be a purpose if the baby's hungry, but sometimes the mother might feed because the child is unsettled or they've been apart for a few hours. And within that experience, it's all about connection. But at the same time, I noticed the other day when I was feeding my baby, I had the phone with me that I was being distracted. I hardly noticed I was doing it. Oh, then I was done. And I realized, wow, this is the most circular action that there can be. And yet I was doing it in a way that was arrowed. So what I've done in my life, which is I've tried to slow down the arrow. I found that social media, especially WhatsApp, was because it's constant, constant, constant activity. Every time you're doing something, there's something else coming in and you're never really done. And then you're, you're shooting these arrows, you're sending the replies, but then there's more and there's more and there's more. So I found that I needed to find a way to break that. And this is what I would suggest to all of you in your own way, if it is something that applies to you, 
find a way to have that time out of social media or text or whatever it is, whatever modus operandi you're using to connect with the world. Connection is amazing, but over-connection actually hampers us from being who we truly need to be. One trick I've learned is I used to do this when we came home from school, the phone stayed in the car. So for that gap of time where I was busy with supper and bedtime, there wasn't the phone around at all. And for a time that did work. If you do feel like you need to be contactable during that time, what I've done recently, and I can't say I've got it, I've got it totally right, which is I've got myself a dumb phone for my personal interactions, for the relationships that are meaningful to me throughout my life. I don't want to be in a situation where I'm not contactable at all. And I can leave my WhatsApp phone at home. I can leave it there for work. So that has helped me to try and calm down so that I'm able to be present at the times where I'm needed to be with family, to be with relationship. Another example, and this, not, this might not float your boat, is that when I notice in the house that everything's quite busy and um, busy about the progress and doing, and this one's got their homework and that one needs to get, I just light some candles. I never used to be a candle person. As I said, I'm an arrow. But for me, that has been a new harmonious way of just lending a bit of calmness into the hectic doing. And if you have some classical music as well, that really helps. We went away a couple of weeks ago, um, just overnight. Um, that was before I had recalibrated actually. So I took my work along with me. <laughs> anyway, as we walked into the room, I've never had this before. It was a simple hotel out in the country and there was literally classical music playing as you walked in. And it made me realize the power of music. I'm a musical person, I love music, but how often am I using music to actually enhance my life and provide that balance when things around are hectic. I'm just checking the comments here. Can anyone suggest ways in their life that they have act either ways that they've already achieved that coming back into the circle and finding ways to be present in this hectic life? Um, please share with us because obviously everyone needs to find it in their own way. Oh, apparently the Goldstein kid said that it was yesterday morning. I suppose that was one of the stories that I got wrong. Another interesting thing I found is that as much as our arrow driven activities can become circles, if we just put that energy in like Hanoich the shoemaker, it can also work the other way around. If someone is so much of an arrow, that they can't actually find the time to stop and take care of themselves. Sometimes making a circle activity into an arrow can help them find the balance. I'll give you an example. My friend yesterday is um, a, a friend of mine who suffers from Crohn's and she's been told to slow down. She realized she's rushing, rushing, rushing. She needs to take time to take care of herself. And a therapist actually told her to write down as on her to-do list to take that time out, whatever it was, five minutes to sit and have a cup of coffee. My cleaner who was here a few minutes ago, I was sharing a couple of these ideas with her. She said she grew up in Romania post the communist regime. There was no time for emotion. There was no feelings. If there was a child crying, what's wrong? Be quiet, slap him. There was not a chance to actually be able to appreciate the fact that you even had a circle. And she said she's trying to find that balance now in her life of not being too much of a circle because she'll have a cup of, cup, a cup of coffee in hand. And as she's got the coffee, she's running around trying to do all of these other things for her family because she wants them to feel love and to feel connection. Now that's wrong. And I noticed this the other day as well with myself. I actually forced myself. It was outside kosher outlet. I'd been rushing, 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 doing, 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 arrow, arrow, nonstop. I got into the shop and I realized I need to stop. So I bought myself a sandwich, a chocolate and a drink. And I went back into my car without having done the shopping. I don't know if any of you met, met me there. And I forced myself to actually take 
one bite at a time out of that sandwich. And it did wonders just taking those few minutes of circle time amidst all the arrowness. Oh, I've got some lovely examples here. Phoning my mum, beautiful. On the days where I was so intense with my work, I found I kept saying no to the people that are the most important people in my life. It's so wonderful to be able to have a mum. Let's capitalize on our relationships because at the end of the day, when all is said and done, those are the most important things in our life. Yes, there's loads to do and it's never gonna end, but take the time to stop and take that time to, for family. I go wild swimming every day in the ladies pond in Kenwood. Amazing, Natalie, that's a lovely example. Taking time out so that you can be present in the world, that you can enjoy Hashem's world. When you look around the world and you see this beautiful creation, the world that we live in, the natural beauty of the world, it's a reminder Hashem has created this world for us to enjoy, for us to have that balance. I feel like we need to fight for that balance more in this generation than, and, than in any generation before. Not that I lived in them, but from, from what I gather, because we, ha we have the sky's the limit. We have the opportunity to connect to so many people at every given moment. But with that comes a lot of stress. Doing yoga with the kids, beautiful, and spending one-to-one -one time with family. And again, being mindful that when you're doing this, not doing it just to get it done and to get it ticked, but doing it and being present with it. What, uh, one evening, um, I went out with parents. We just we officially have a date night. It doesn't always happen. And I realized it was a night where I had a lot of other stuff going on. We were planning an event and all sorts of things on my brain. I was like, oh, yeah, but we have to go on our date. So now date is about coming back into that circle. And it's about relationship. But while I was on the date, I'm thinking, okay, all of these other things. All right, yeah, let's get the date done. It was more like something that we had to get out of the way, which was defeating the purpose. So again, even when you're doing a circle task, make sure that it doesn't fall back to being an arrow. Any other ideas to be shared? Please share any other ideas of how you have found that balance in your life and I believe it's never going to be an, an act of perfection that I have completely shifted my life. I'm now able to access circle all the time. Like anything in life, Rome wasn't built in a day and it requires moment to moment choices for growth. Every day is an opportunity for us to grow again. And often we have to learn the hard way but it's so worth it. It's so worth making those choices. The smallest little choices, the five minutes here or there that you can give yourself so that you're coming back into that circle. Shabbos, now that it's Erev Shabbos is a great example too, because Shabbos is there to give us that balance. And yet sometimes I find with myself, Shabbos can become such an arrow instead of a circle if it's all about the to-do lists get everything ready, get everything cleaned, get everything cooked, light the candles, lay the table, have the guests. Hang on, this is the time to be present. So let's make sure that the mitzvahs that are designed to connect us remain as connectors and not as arrows. Beautiful, a cup of tea. I never used to be into my hot drinks when I was a full on arrow, but I've actually grown into it now. I've even tried to figure out how to use the coffee machine, although something different seems to go wrong each time. I've managed to punch out a few successful coffees. Miriam says, read book. Oh, lovely, apparently my kids are listening. Um, yeah, I wish you'd all been reading books before the class, then I could have actually got my notes together. But yes, 100% reading books is fabulous. Even while I was preparing this class or trying to, I realized I could be doing this in arrow mode, which is, let me see how I can blast out an amazing class or circle mode. Why am I doing this? I wanna be able to share tools that can really enhance our lives, just like they've enhanced mine. So the arrow didn't actually happen because the thing didn't get prepared in the way I expected it to. But hopefully through these few words, um, 
we have all gained some kind of recalibration and at least to recognize, and I'll probably, I'll end with this. There's really three points that we can keep in our minds. Let's call it A, B, C. A, awareness. Recognize where you are in the moment. It might be an arrow task. It might be a circle task, but where are you in yourself? If you're sounding resentful and angry and you're feeling stuck, chances are you're approaching this with too much of the arrow and you need to try and find that harmony, whether it's lighting the candles, switching on the music, taking time out, walking the dog, going on holiday. That awareness will help you. B is being versus doing. Yes, this world was created for action, but at the end of the day, we are human beings and we need to take that time to appreciate our lives. Before you get up and start rushing around, slow down, thank Hashem, feel gratitude. Joanne, I remember you had, I can't remember her name, someone who came on here who was very much into the circle, but she'd, she'd started at the arrow. She mentioned how when she was working, she was so busy that she didn't even allow herself the time to go to the bathroom. Do you remember? And at that point she reached rock bottom. She realized this has got to change. So A, awareness, notice where you're at. B, being, being, being. And C, calm. Once we recognize where we're at and aim for that being mode, we can step into a situation where we're calm, whatever is going on around us. It helps to have something practical to visualize. I know Rebetz and Zilba this morning mentioned, you can envisage Hashem's shield around you, protecting you. Whatever it is that helps you get to that situation of calm, use it. Joanne, I'm not sure how long we've got, but if anyone has any questions, please feel free. Again, I'm not the biggest guru. These are just a few bits of wisdom that I've picked up along the way that have helped me to recalibrate my life. And I'd be glad to share them with you. So. So firstly, that was really absolutely lovely. And you've had some really lovely feedback. And I was just going to tell you that Susie Glasky was the person who presented that um, amazing um, blue uh, moment of no, 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 this is not what life is about. So Susie's in Manchester. Amazing. So yeah, we can all learn from each other. But if there's anybody before we are Mafresh Khalan, honestly, um, Sarala, that was absolutely, it was beautiful. I was thinking of some of the moments um, and things that I actually do. Firstly, I do like my coffee, so that's one good thing. Um, secondly, <laughs> uh, mine are usually late at night. Um, but as life changes and going from the busyness of getting, you know, a whole bunch of children out the house, my moment was like, of whoa, was when I sat down to, to nurse a baby, having the blessings of having the children and being able to nurse. So that was like that amazing moment and then it went to late at night on a Thursday night usually after midnight when I was doing my colors and my food and that was the quiet and the calm and the you know I used to have wind chimes outside my door I don't know what actually happened to them but you know all the lovely things that we we kind of like have to stop and you're right sometimes I drive into my drive and I stop for a moment or two and I just before I come into the house just sit for a minute or two and come in so wow. it's wonderful Beautiful. and I just thought that the challah is exactly that too because the mitzvah you're about to do isn't it the same thing the arrow mode you put the flour and the sugar and the oil and all the activity in the action and then you take out that little piece of bread and it's rounded isn't it it's even yeah. in the shape of the circle <laughs> and that's reminding circle. you and and also if you think about the way we actually make challah and then the kneading and the rolling and the plaiting and then the patience of waiting. You know, all the things really about challah really fit in so beautifully with being able to have the action in the circle, the arrow and the circle working together. So it's amazing. Beautiful. And it even looks a bit like a spiral. <laughs> it depends. <laughs> uh, 
But You're I think amazing, that, that, that's also when we light our Shabbos candles, the moment that you light your Shabbos candles, you can really feel that change of the arrow to the circle. You know, it's, oh. it's like you, you can't do anything else. You have to circle once you're standing in front of your candles, as long as you don't have somebody pulling on your skirt and screaming and crying. But you can still have that moment of the circle. Wow. And I've just thought even the candles, look, they look like arrows to begin with. And then what happens by the time it gets to have dollar? Gone. They're intertwined. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Okay, did anybody have a question or a comment besides, yes, it's lovely, and that's great. So, um, yep. Okay. And a nutritionist and life coach. There you go. Okay. Anyone? Or are we about to be mafresh hala? Okay. No? Can I just say something? Yes, Please. you may. Sorry, I'm off, um, off camera. Just come, not long come home from work. So. Oh, that's okay, Sharon. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to say um, something about, do we not start off with arrows when we start here and then with us all being together, do we not become a nice circle? Yeah, 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 that is, that is. And actually, when you sit down for the ship, that's what it happens. We come we no, it's like we're all joined together. On, and then by the time we're finishing, really, does it have to finish? It's just all there. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank and you. thanks, Joanne, thank for much. constantly being the powerhouse to provide this forum for us every week, a few times a week. 